when we were all young, we were all artists. And some of us carry it with us, and some of us leave it behind. But I think it's an innate part of us um, that we can cultivate and that we can use to you know, heal our wounded world and heal ourselves. I am a mixed media artist. I started creating um, when I was 35. It was, a, it was a difficult time in my life and I used the art to help me get through um, some inner explorations and inner transformation. And um, now where I'm at, I'm going for my master's degree in conscious evolution. To me, creativity comes from um, a very spiritual place within my, within my soul. And so um, when I get a vision for a piece of art or an inspiration for it, it's sort of like I'm just the channel, I'm just the vehicle to create. And, um, and then I sort of feel like I have to make whatever this thing is. And, um, and then there's the whole process that goes along with it and how things change as it, as it goes and it becomes sort of like this dance with, with the art and with the creation and, and you know, sort of waiting for, for divine inspiration almost to, to alight upon me and then to create whatever it is that wants to be created. So, um, and the, the transformation piece is that um, in my experience and in my study, transformation happens as a result of crisis. We grow out of crisis, you know. Um, when you have compost, the flowers and vegetables grow even better when they're growing in a pile of crap. So life can be that way too. And so art can be a vehicle for inner meditation, inner reflection, and um, conspiracy with the divine. Just like in relationships, I think that um, I am your mirror. So I want my art to be a mirror too. So someone goes up to it and experiences it and I would love it if they would see something about themselves or something about the world or something they hadn't thought about before. Um, you know, I'm expressing what I need to express with the art and, and channeling what I need to let out. Um, but it's really a subjective experience for the viewer, for what they get out of it and what they feel. And um, I would like for them to be inspired for their own creativity and say, well, if this woman can do it, I can do it too. You know, this piece, um, was definitely a visualization for me. Um, it was definitely an inspiration. It was something that came through me. I was, I was drinking a lot of wine when I made this piece and, and I found it to be very um, whimsical at first when I was making it. Meditating on it though after it was created was where the transformation came in and where it, it really allowed me to look at my life and say, you know, I, I can be a more clear channel if I uh, purify what I'm ingesting and I, I don't drink the wine and, and I, I change my habits and I transform. So that's how the, the art became a vehicle for me. So. And, and hopefully when other people look at it too, they're like, oh, you know, I actually pitched this to uh, a wine bar and to a um, vineyard and nobody wanted it, of course, because they don't want people to be like questioning. Oh no, don't question that. I love the, the feeling of our, our striving in life for this perfection that um, really is not reality. I mean, maybe it is for some, but like a visual perfection that society is so um, marketed to about and so sort of addicted to. And um, so I like to play around with that and I like to play around with, with my, own, um, my own need to uh, not want to hang on to the pursuit of perfection because I think it's a deadly trap and it's a trap of, of non-transformation because we try to be something that we're not instead of coming into our own and the important thing is for us to be who we are and to realize that. So that's sort of why I play, I play with the, the Barbies and I specifically like to decapitate them and then put time gears on them. But there's so. one that has uh, Barbie heads on time gears submerged in jello in a big pickle jar with another Barbie head with a crown on top um, of the piece, and that's called Beauty Pageant. There's so, one on the wall over there okay. called Loss of Innocence, and it's got, um, uh, it, it's on a piece of metal, a catalytic converter that I found in a parking lot, and it's got some different um, parts in there. And that piece is about um, identity and power and the struggle with identity. Um, and
and being human and the differences um, that we find among each other, but they're really um, surface or, or even physical. So that piece deals with gender, it deals with race, it deals with age, it deals with ability. And, um, you know, the point of the piece is for somebody to look at it, maybe get a little confused, and hopefully have some kind of epiphany about humanness and about a lot of these surface things that, that tend to divide us, where our humanness, you know, brings us together and gives us that common thread.